let's do some fixing on this. Every painting needs some fixing, and this one's no exception. I have seven things, they're all fairly small, that I'm going to fix. The first ones are in the flower, and I'm just going to take some water and soften all of these. because look how pretty and smooth they look in there. And I lost a little bit of that in trying to get the shading in. So just every single one. And it doesn't matter if you go across petals because the paint is pretty established now. I see that I also need, as part of softening and defining maybe, some bleed proof white. This is by Dr. P.H. Martins. And everything you need that I use today is in the comments below. And there's a couple places here where I lost some of the white or the shape of the petal. And it, it doesn't make sense because of it. So I'm going to add these. Bleed Proof White is really cool because you can put it on like that. But this is just a wet brush. But you can soften it just like watercolor. A little bit too much water on that one. And same with there. You can just soften it. And then over here, this it, it might not still might not make sense. It's hard to make sense of this part. But this was a lot lighter and it defined this other petal back here. So I'm just softening that a little bit. And they see these are all tiny little things, and the painting wouldn't be ruined if I didn't do them. But it does make them nicer. And when you put white over a bunch of things, it's slightly opaque, so it does soften edges. Now there needs to be some darker spots. In the photo, you can see that it's quite dark back there, and I got it dark there, but this little thing above it is bright and stands out. And so. I'm just going to, some of it I'm just going to wash over and it'll probably be enough. Um, but this particular one, I think I actually need to add some color. Um, although that softening, it did help. And then over here is this unexplainably bright thing. Your eye goes to the greatest point of contrast. So these little things might seem like they don't matter, but they do take away from the overall look of the flower. So because of that, this petal, which is front and center, disappeared and lost its shape. I'm going to give it back its shape. It's quite dark in there, and I need the little point to give the petals their shape. I'll just bring it out and soften it as it comes out that dark area. I go back and forth a little bit with between the light and the dark as I put it on there. And I'm adding some extra on here because I want it to be defined better. Now I don't want it to look like this rope is hugging this. I want the flower to look in front of the rope. And since I changed the rope entirely, I don't really have an accurate color, but I probably can get an accurate value. That helps a little bit. The flowers blend in too much here, and so I'm actually going to put bleed, bleed proof white on my background and make some of these flowers pop out. It's a little bit challenging to add bleed proof white to your background and uh, make it blend, but it's worth it if it finishes off your painting properly. So I'm clearly going to need my smaller brush. Some of you might be 
you're thinking, oh no, she's ruined it. But these variegated backgrounds, they're so easy to fix. In fact, I had one painting, I wish I had videoed it, that I made it a rust colored background and it didn't look right. It needed to be out in the sunshine because the flowers, that the vase had flowers with reflections and it needed blue. And so I went back and I redid it. So now I'm gonna get some of the colors that are in the background. Now one thing I wanted to do is put a, another another hole where the light is shining down through into this shadow. And so I'm going to just do that up here. I think um, I think probably the light would hit differently. These ones were so little they didn't show, so I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. So I'm getting my brush really clean, getting my bleed proof white out. And this is a little bit scary. I'm immediately mixing it with color. So this does a couple of things. It defines that leaf there. And it adds another interesting shape. Number four. So number five is to soften the edges and fix this jar. Now I got a little carried away and I softened, already softened this edge a bit. It was quite a sharp contrast. Right next to the white, there needs to be some darker area that shows the depth of the glass. Now the next thing that I really am itching to fix on here is that it, it got distorted a little bit. So I'm looking at my picture again. And one of the things that got distorted is this bottom edge. And I'm gonna come right across every reflection behind it to try and get that straight. And then as a result, this next edge also got distorted. Now, if it, if it helps, you should draw this in first. And it doesn't take much to lose the distortion, like I just, my brush went up there, and that'll make it lose it. Now I wanna put a few brighter colors in here from the flowers. So I'm gonna add some purples into this, especially under here. Now after you do a little part, when you're making a correction like that, you need to hold it away from you. Make sure you got it right. And then I did put a curve in the water line. I said flat in the in the video in the big video of this whole painting. The shadow of the rope would, because the light's coming this way, come over on this side of the rope too, not just be under it. One last repair on the reflection. So I needed to establish my line back there, but these stems would be in front of the line, not behind it. So I need to do some lifting here 
and reestablish the stems as in front of that line. And now that that's finished, we can put some lines in front of it. So this water line would be between the outside of the jar and these stems. The last thing is to put it at arm's length and check it out. Now you can always find more and at some point you need to say, I think this is fine. I'm going to leave it like it is. And then you sign your name. Happy painting.